All right, everybody. Hello and welcome. This is John Rambo presents the show. Thank you once again for joining us. My name is John. We are joined by the world, the globe trotting playboy himself, <laughs> OJ. Hello. That is, I think, the best welcome I have ever received in my entire life. Yes, yeah, so we'll get to that in a second. You've uh, been all over the place. A little bit, just a little bit. Well, just a little bit. You know, nothing uh, out of the ordinary for you. A little bit farther than I had actually planned, actually. So, James Bond and shit. Oh no! Don't get me confused with that guy, please. Okay. All right. But uh, if you're new to the show, the show is available for download. This and every show is actually available for download at geekfiregifts.com slash the show. What you'd like you to do is download that file, spread it like a disease, like a virus, all over the place. I want to thank everyone that's uh, been doing that, OJ. People have been spreading the show mm. like a disease in their homes, at school, in churches. Letting it permeate the air. Yes, they are spreading the digital gonorrhea or the digital herpes, whichever you prefer, uh, like a disease, and uh, it will soon infect the entire nation. The, the show. show nation. Yes. So I just want to give you a little update on uh, last week, or from last week, when I was uh, basically homeless and just living on your couch for a while. <laughs> I did actually make it home. I drove you to the airport on Thursday morning. Yeah, well, and you still got my Easy Pass. I do have your Easy Pass. I've been using that. I've been going play crossing bridges for no reason, just walking <laughs> over the bridge, <laughs> flashing it and shit. <laughs> but um, I uh, drove you to the airport on Thursday, and I got I went home, and the power came on, thankfully, and uh, the house was cold for like several days. After that, but um, I want to thank everyone for their well wishes and uh, made it made it back okay. They actually redid Halloween on Saturday night in this area. I don't know if you Aww, knew that. Oh, really? They had like a reboot because uh, Halloween was canceled on Monday. Aww. What I heard is they actually had cops in the neighborhood on Monday, or Monday Monday was Halloween. So on Monday night they had cops making sure no one was trick or treating because there was like power because of the power lines everywhere. Oh yeah, it was dangerous. Right, so they were like, you can't, you know, make sure you're making sure people aren't doing that. But uh, I was actually one of the fortunate people, because people that didn't have power for days and days after me had no power. I actually went to, to the diner, one of the local diners, and, like, everyone was packed, and everyone was just complaining like crazy. Oh, of course. You know, because they still don't have power, and they're freaking out, and you had the old timers, uh, you know, yelling and stuff like that. In my but, uh, day, when we lost power, we didn't have power to begin with. Well, this one guy was like screaming, and he's like, "Oh, we, you know, we send our our troops to other places instead. They should be here fixing this stuff like that." But I was like, "Okay, man." Well, I mean, that's what uh, the National Guard is for, a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. But um, you know, I just want to thank everyone. I'm back home, and uh, things are cool. Having a good good time. Oh, just just uh, living it up, huh? Just living got, it up. Got your electricity, your hot water, your indoor plumbing. Got my own charted three. <laughs> There you go. That's something. Yes. So you were not actually home yet. No. So let's start from the beginning. <clears throat> on last Thursday, it's kind of confusing because the show goes up on Friday. Yeah. But the day before the last show, this is messing with my head, I drove to the airport. Like We left at like 6 a.m. Yes. And we headed to the airport. You're going to Sin City itself, Las Vegas. Beautiful Las Vegas. And you had a camera with you, John. Uh, yes, what were your I did. intentions? What are your intentions with this? I don't understand what the camera's about. Were you trying to lure a young lady into your room for some type of filming? Oh, I wouldn't need to lure a I, wild I type of thing. I mean, I wouldn't need to lure anybody. I mean, kind of follow <laughs> me around like uh, dogs after. Never mind. But yeah. It was, so, why don't you uh, explain what this camera's all about? What are you doing with this camera? Well, my intent was to uh, set up my own little uh, channel here somewhere. You know, my own little corner. My own YouTube uh, channel. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know it's, it's it's a crazy thought. I mean, I don't know if people do that sort of thing, but I thought it might be fun. I mean, I got a camera, so why not do it? I haven't chosen a name yet, but it, once I do, and I, I, I'll start getting stuff up out there, and you guys will be the first to know. So my channel is a spinoff of the DSP channel, and you will, in fact, be a spinoff of my channel. It's a spinoff of a spinoff. Yeah, like, we're not even... In, like So basically, if DSP's channel is Cheers, you're Frasier, and I don't... I don't even know what I would be. It would be the uh, Niles. Other, Niles. You know, the Niles show. Yeah, I'm Niles. Which, which I'm sure would have been a rating smash. 
of course. So I'm sure you will have great success. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you actually take videos and stuff, or what? Yeah, yeah. Although I found out I'm nowhere near as good as it is as, as you are. Like, well, I mean, who is? What? I, yeah. You know. All well, right. So I left you at the airport. I haven't really spoken to you since. Um, I dropped you off last week. So what? What happened? Just kind of bring us through. All right. Well, once I eventually have some video up, you'll see this for yourselves. But the this, this, this summarized interesting version is uh, got on my met, met up with my friend with one of my friends Tom, who apparently uh, my friend Brian who's also going on the trip told me that Tom didn't want to sit next to me in the hopes that he could sit next to a cute girl on the plane. After speaking with Tom, I found out that was in fact false. Brian was full oh. of garbage, and he ended up sitting pretty far away. But it was cool. I sat next to uh, two girls, and it was pretty funny too because they were just kind of listening. Well, I mean, they were listening to headphones the entire time, so I didn't get to say hi. But towards the end of the plane, like. Right, they each had like a Bloody Mary or something. Like, they yeah. listen to the show. Ah, uh, they don't, as far as I can is tell. That, is that not what they were listening to in the plane? I don't understand. No, they're watching a movie. Was, God, spread, spread the spread the digital gonorrhea, John. Come on, man. I'm trying, but they try to tell you this, <laughs> dude. It was pretty awful because they, they told me, uh, yeah, you know, uh, a Bloody Mary and two Benadryl will get you through a flight. I'm like, you don't mix those and alcohol. <laughs> Or you could just sit and you know and read a book or something, but okay. Well, that's what I did. All right, okay. so you're on the plane going to Vegas. Yeah, people are drinking, having a good time. Cost did you? Attention. When I what time, you landed in during the daytime, right? Yeah, we landed around uh, one or th- between one and three, I think. All right, I'm gonna ask you how this was for you. But when I went to Vegas, the, one of the coolest things is you leave New York, right? It's, it's green out. You yeah. look outside the window, and it's like green for most of the country. And then all of a sudden you're like near you're near Nevada and you look out and you open the window and it's just like brown. Oh it's yeah. Rock. I, I got a desert. It's it's desolate. There's nothing there. I, I had a brief look out the window, but the girls kept it shut most of the time. So what was that like when you first looked out and you're like, oh man? Like, oh wow. Apparently, uh, reality is brown. Those HD games weren't lying. Yes. <laughs> all right. So uh, take us through what happened next. We want people want right. to know. All right. So po- we popped out. And um, we had to wait at the. We were apparently waiting at the airport for our friend Thomas, who was dropping off his wife Amanda, who was flying back home. While we, and we were also going to wait for Brian. So Thomas never got back. We never got in touch with Thomas. Brian got Thomas to say he'd come pick him up, but we didn't even know that was his plan. So I emailed Thomas the night before saying, "Hey, can you pick us up at the airport with your rented car?" And he had gotten my email and was cool with it, but he never replied. So we were just kind of wandering around like, well, Brian gets in at 1.30. If we can find him, we can hitch a ride with Thomas. But I uh, know Thomas stopped in a little while after we got there, after I got myself a bagel and what I thought was an eclair but was actually a maple stick. What the hell is that? It looks like an eclair, but it's maple frosting. It's a donut. Huh. And wow. Yeah. It, um, that ba- the, so the you, bagel- you're on a plane. You're on a plane for several hours. Most people get off the plane. Maybe they'll use the bathroom. Maybe they'll get a, a drink of water. OJ goes right for the uh, the pastries. Is that what you're, you're saying? I was hungry, man. A bagel and donut seemed the most reasonable thing, and it cost me $6.90. Okay. And uh, after, while eating the bagel, I noticed that uh, also the airport was filled with slot machines. Yes, that, that is the first thing I noticed. It's like right in front of you as soon as you get off the plane. It's like, yeah. it's just, and I, of course, always play as soon as I get off. Of course. Start losing money at that point. You know, I might as well uh, get that out of the wait, way. Wait till so, later. Why even make it to the hotel? You know, you just yeah, just just leave the airport. I don't even know if you have to leave security to hit the slot machines. No, that would be pretty hilarious. You just uh, hit the slots and then you get back on another plane and fly out. Yeah, best well. layover ever. Like that's a recipe <laughs> for fun, man. Right. So yeah, so we we, we ran into Thomas and, and his wife. They had been staying at Zion National Park um, at a bread and be- bed and breakfast and. Uh, hiking and stuff through the mountains and whatever, which sounded like it was pretty cool, and pretty much you fall down, you die. But uh, they had a good time, and uh, so Amanda flew out, and we picked up Brian. And one thing I noticed is that they have security videos telling you how to get, you know, how to prepare yourself for security. You know, like, stuff in your pockets. And they've got the craziest things. They've got a Starfleet officer and a Klingon in one video, and the Klingon's got to put his bad left up on the table. Wow. They had Carrot Top with his bag of props try to get through security. Um, well, he, he shouldn't be allowed to fly. He's, he's freakishly uh, looking. He I mean, doesn't have to fly anymore. He's got his own show in Vegas. It's advertised like on billboards everywhere. That's why he. That's why he has his own show there because he's not allowed to fly. He has to stay in one spot <laughs> because of his freakish demeanor. He's not allowed to get on planes. FAA regulations. He cannot. Fly. Well, let me ask you this question. You had mentioned to me you would like to go through the scanner or something. Yeah. 
So what is it? You, you could choose not to go through? Yeah, they just... Um, All right, explain this, explain this to the audience. Okay, so if you don't want to go through the new handy-dandy um, backscatter x-ray machine, the TSA will fetch someone of your gender, and uh, they'll pull you to the side. They'll handle all your stuff and bring it over. And um, then they will run their hands up and down your legs, your back, Woo! your shirt. And then the back, their palms will touch your butt. Not their palms. The back of their hands will touch your butt. And then um, the back of their hands will kind of creep up your inner thigh. Can you have some of the opposite gender do this if you want? I don't think so. Uh, why would you rather have that done than the actual machine? What is the... the I don't point? know. I, I just know too. I just know too many paranoid people who say it's a bad idea. So I have. So I prefer not to do it. Well, like it causes some kind of uh, radiation or something. Or yeah, I don't know. That's body? It's new technology. Blah blah blah. The radiation stays in your skin. Blah blah blah. All sorts or do you of feel that they're gonna have like nude pictures of you that they're going to circulate? Well, come on. Everyone wants nude pictures of me, and I'd rather get a profit from it than just giving them away for free. Wow. Moving on. Uh, all right. So. What, uh, did you go, what hotel did you stay? I don't even know where I'm at right now. After All right, we, we, told okay, me, but... well, next we went to the to the hotel, and that was the Aria. My first time staying in a five-star hotel. Um, you could tell it was five-star because the curtains open and close at the push of a button. Cool. And it was pretty sweet. Um, What's you know, this hotel near? Like, is it near other hotels? It's in City Center. It's right near the Vidara Spa. It's connected to the Bellagio. Is that like a new thing or something? The City Center is kind of new. Yeah, because I know they were building that, I think, when I was there. Oh, no, it's done. And um, it is fully-fledged casino. And, uh, yeah, it's ready and waiting to take your money. But their, buff- but their buffet is pretty good. We went there two or three times. Um, it was very enjoyable. But uh, we actually did have a planned show for the Thursday night. So everyone's pretty tired. But, you know, we arrived there only a few hours after we left because of the time difference. So we went off to go see Tournament of Kings at the Excalibur Casino and Hotel. Nice. And uh, Excalibur is a crazy place. First of all, walking there, we had to go past New York, New York, which was just messing with my head. <laughs> um, yeah, there's just a bridge for no reason, the uh, Chrysler Building and the Empire State Building. Yeah, they just combine everything. Like, this is New York, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and the sad part was they were almost the same height. I'm looking at them thinking, uh... You guys didn't quite get the scale right, but you know what? I'll, I'll allow you that. They just threw some stuff together, man. I mean, yeah, it wasn't it's a, a weird idea, anyway. Like, who who goes to Vegas? Like, almost New York, New York, yeah. <laughs> do well, it. We'll get back to there later, actually. Okay. <clears throat> so we wandered into Excalibur, and uh, we were walking in. One of the one, there was there were some girls dressed in leather who tried to tug over my friend Thomas. They kept pulling at the one married guy, and uh, they kept tugging at him. He's like, "Nope, moving on." Moving on. They were, uh, well, who were they? They were ladies of the evening? No. We'll get what to were that. They? Okay. So we're wandering around, and we, we got our tickets, which were in a really good section, and then we didn't have anything to do for like an hour and a half. They say to get there four hours early so that you get there super early, and then, oh, man, I'm bored. Let's go spend money at the casino. Derp. So uh, we actually uh, went to a bar. We each got a drink, and then one of our one of our member of our party was incredibly c- curious about what these women were doing since they kept trying to uh, accost us. So they right. walk over, and they pull you over for a photo with the women. They take a few photos, and then they try to get you to spend $25 each on a photo. And they're like models? Pretty much, yeah. There's no there's no sex involved here? No, they just... As far as you know. They just kind of drape themselves over you and uh, take photos and then ask you to buy them. What would be the That's point of that? You, kinda, you bring that picture home, and then what do you, what do you show it to people and say like that, that was a legit situation, like you met these chicks... Yeah, yeah, you know, you just met these girls. They have guys too. Just it's obvious that you paid for stuff. it. So, yeah. like, what, so what is the, you know, why would you do this? Um, I do not know. So I didn't bother. I wasn't okay. about to spend money on that. But uh, after that, it was time to get ready for the show. We go downstairs, and uh, I wanted to hit the arcade, see what it was like down there. And lo and behold, they have Marvel vs. Capcom too, and someone had already put a quarter into it, so I only needed one more quarter. Right. And. Uh, it was pretty funny. They had carnival games and all sorts of cool stuff. You know, my sort of thing. Played Marvel until the show was ready. And then so you played a game that you, that's that's uh, over a decade old that you have like three versions of. That's what you played? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Fair enough. So how was the show? Uh, it was pretty fun. Um, they give you an entire chicken. So I was kind of intrigued knowing that an entire bird had died just for my meal. Don't you eat with your hands with that? 
Yeah, you're not allowed to have silverware. Although I think my friend took out his knife and no one cared. Well, well, they, well they don't care. It's not, it's not like it's not like real medieval times. I gotta come over and like behead you. Well, at medieval times, they yell at you for being a witch if you do it. What is this evil silverware? I know. To the, stock, well, to the stockade with you. <laughs> Pretty much. Then those, then those two chicks that want your picture go over and whip your ass while you're in the stockade. I think some people might have enjoyed that. That's actually an extra $25 on top of the 25 for the picture. Yeah. All right, continue. Come on. So we were in the Russia section, and um, I was trying to remember Zangief's victory taunt. Like, for a show. I was shouting that. I was like, for mother Russia. Shouting all sorts of crazy stuff. And it well, was Red Cyclone and stuff like that, I think he says, right? Yeah, although Russia was purple here. Okay. Well, they don't want to, you know, the you know, the wall fell a long time ago. They don't want to... They don't want to mess with anything. That up. Right. But uh, it was pretty funny. Our guy was uh, kind of a jerk. I mean, he was supposed to be a jerk. You know, that's the what heel. his character was. Yeah, he was, he, was, he was the heel. He was clearly the heel. The Russian was the heel. Who was the, uh, well, the face? Well, he wasn't. He was of the face. I think was probably England. No, it was probably Ireland or Spain. Maybe I'm not really sure because there oh, was. Okay. But there, there was a bigger enemy. There was a bigger heel at the end, and then everyone became friends. It's usually like in my experience with these things, like the whitest person there, like the blonde-haired, blue-eyed person. That's the face. Yeah, he there. There was a blonde-haired, blue-eyed guy who became. And the then face. every every darker person, that's the heel. That's how they usually do these things. <laughs> well, the Russia guy was pretty pale, but. All right. But it was cool. They uh they gave you gave us souvenir mugs, um, if you got a drink. So naturally, I felt like spending an extra like eighteen dollars on a drink. <sighs> um, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, the show was, you know, it was it was really campy. Was there any but, accidental mistakes? Like people really got stabbed? No, not that I can to, see. Someone actually like broke their leg. They fell off a <laughs> horse, and they weren't like that. that sometimes that happens because they I don't uh. know if they train these guys that well. No, but the horses were impressive for doing what they did in such a small area. I mean, yeah, right, right. it was a lot smaller than medieval times. They had way more pyrotechnics. Plus, they live in the desert, too. Yeah, right? <laughs> but uh, it was a lot of fun, and afterward, we kind of wandered around. And we didn't really do too much else that night. We went back to the casino. I think we like played roulette for like five minutes. Oh, yeah, and we wandered around uh, to a couple of the nightclubs, which were pretty dead. I mean... What was it, Thursday night? Thursday night, I mean, they, there there were a bunch of people. They were super loud, but there were like, there were no women. And the one, and then we went to another one. It was like a bachelorette party. For There's someone. no women. Maybe you're, maybe you're at the wrong kind of club, sir. Yeah. Well, we did go. We tried another one. And one uh, down under was that is that the show you were at? That's the show I was doing my best to not look at posters for because boy, <laughs> uh, boy. Um, how'd you do with the gambling? We get you on track here. All right. Well, I in total I lost fewer than a hundred dollars. Did you win any money at, at any point? Yeah, oh yeah. I was up for a while, and uh, um, my friends and I played kind of competitive slots, where uh, yeah. we each sat down and pulled the same amount of time, and whoever ran out of money first lost. Aren't you a poker guy? I'm terrible at poker, dude. Oh, okay. I like throwing the dice, my friend. Is that what you were doing? Were you throwing some dice? After That was the last gambling I did, actually. I wanted to save the best for last. So first we did roulette, and my friend and I you know, did even number of spins. Whoever loses first loses. And I came out of that a dollar ahead. And then the next time I came out two dollars ahead. Then um, um, we played roulette for real with a friend, of, a different friend of mine. And uh, I was down. I was maybe up twenty, thirty bucks at one point. And then I took my winnings and went to go to the dice table because I just wanted to throw. And there was no one else at the table. There was no one else at the cheapest table they had. So I, I just kept throwing. I threw maybe eight times until my money was wow. gone. And then we went to snake, dinner. Snake eyes. Oh gosh, it was awful. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun, but it was just like. Money, money, and I was up five dollars, and then down, 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 down. No but, blackjack. Nah, I wanted to play blackjack, but I didn't feel like pay, paying ten bucks a hand. Did you go to any buffets? Yeah, I wanted to go to the Bellagio buffet really badly. Yeah, yeah, that's the one that's good, I think. We couldn't fit it in. Did you, you go to, to any the, buffets at all? Oh yeah, the Aria buffet. Okay, so how was that? It was pretty good. The food was all really tasty. They had eggs Benedict, although it was kind of cold. Any, One any complaint about the buffet. Yeah. Not really. Um, I didn't try the pizza because you can't make good pizza outside of New York. Well, without trying really hard. It's not that bad there, though, because I think they import... They, like, from what I heard, all the, like, a lot of the best chefs in the world are in Vegas because they, you know, they need... They need uh, it. <laughs> well, they need culinary experts to you yeah. know, run all these, these hotels, and that's like a selling point for every hotel. Is yeah. Like, this guy from this place. Yeah, and they actually... A lot of the food is very good. Yeah, it was really good, although my one complaint was that 
what type of moron serves you Indian curry? Like, you know, the, the, you know there's curry boiling, you know, and then the thing, it, but they serve it with a slotted spoon. What huh. type of moron? Well, they just don't that? want you to, they're, they're trying to make it so you don't take as much food as you probably, most people probably would. Like, dude, it's, the, the, the best part of curry is the sauce. The, the, the meat or whatever is just there to absorb the sauce. That's a buffet trick. Sometimes they'll give you, like, tiny plates. Just to like, make sh- just to discourage you from keep going up, you know. That oh, they'll do no, little man. tricks. They give so us. If you're persistent, tricks. if you're a winner in life, if you're a champion, a buffet champion, you will overcome these odds that they stack in front of you, and you will do what you have to do. No, man, it was. Uh, the plates were big. The desserts were tiny, but that was perfect for me because that meant I got to try a lot of different stuff. Right. And um, and then finally, the last time I went to the buffet, I got asked for a glass of milk, and that made the cookies like ten times better. They were so good. If you ask for gelato, though, they give you two tiny little itty bitty scoops. I'm like, you're looking out for my health here. If I die, I no, can't it's the get same deal, man. They just they want to discourage you from like keep going. So like, you just gotta keep asking for more. Yeah, and if you do, they weren't jerks about it. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it, it was good. The food was good. I mean, it was expensive, but considering how much food you could conceivably eat, it wasn't that expensive. What other places did you eat? Um, well, we ate at. Whew, where did we eat? Um, a few places. Oh, well, one time I went to this exciting place called Dairy Queen. And, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, it was really classy. I got a chili dog and a blizzard <laughs> and a glass of soda for less than $5. Cool. But, no, we went to um, a couple of restaurants. The big one we went to, well, I mean, we ate at Tournament of Kings. Cause that had Applebee's. Nope. Nope. We went to uh, Serendipity. All right, so we talked about this last week. Well, how, how did New it go? New York chin. Yeah, which I had been to as a child. Yes. So how does this compare? It's just as good, although I don't remember there being frozen hot chocolate at the New York one. It uh, was really delicious, but the, let me put it this way. Okay, so the portions were humongous. Um, just way too much food. We got an appetizer of onion rings, and when they only gave us eight onion rings, we thought it might be reasonable. But no, there was just so much food. We were all dying by the end of it. <laughs> when it was over, we had a show next door. And uh, so we just kind of waddled ourselves over there, picked up our tickets, waddled into the casino, hung out, and then waddled out to go see the show. What we was the just, show? Uh, it was Absinthe. What the hell is that? Sort of. I wouldn't call it a cabaret, per se. It's like a variety show. Um, you're in what looks like this old... Was Chris, was Chris Angel at it? No. <laughs> it's like this old 1800s-looking bar. Yeah. And um, they have um, the guy who's basically... The promoter or the producer or the, the backer, the guy who basically quote-unquote owns the place and is putting on the show. And uh, he is basically the, you know, the, the, what, the, ring, the ringmaster kind of. As if, if it were a circus, that's what he would be. And he has an okay. assistant, and they kind of warm up the crowd a little bit. They're really good at improv, and they tear the audience a new one, like making fun of like, oh, well, here's the Republican crowd. Oh, better stay away from the Mexican crowd. Oh, wait, no, that's where you bought your watches from that crowd, like all sorts of crazy stuff. The racist jokes are fun. Yeah, but it was hilarious. I mean, everyone was having a good time. Um, Other sorts of jokes, too, but those were stuck out because they're racist, and racist things are bad a lot of the time, and it sticks in your head. But that was really funny, and they had some really great acts, like one guy who just bounced up all the way to the roof just on chairs that he stacked together. And um, Did you like the show? Be honest. You don't have to say you liked it. it. The show was awesome. It was good. They actually did serve absinthe, but not my best, not my favorite brand. You should have seen Chris Angel. I'd rather uh, we we actually wanted to see magic. We were, um, but uh, the only day we had time to see the amazing Jonathan, it was the day he wasn't doing a show. Oh, next yeah. time you go, we're gonna have the viewers and the listeners plan out your trip. They're gonna plan my trip. Yeah, they're gonna plan. You're gonna have to pay. You're, you'll have to pay for it all, but they're gonna plan where you where you go. <laughs> How is that even remotely? Well, it's cool because I don't have to do any effort except for paying the money. Here, can I, they, can they tell me these are good pay? people. These are good yeah, people, yeah. and they, I trust yeah, you should trust what they want you to do. I'll trust them. They, if they want to tell me roulette numbers too, I'll go for that. I'm sure they'll send you to the finest brothels in Nevada. Oh dear, Bob. All right. So the main thing I wanted to ask you about. Yeah. You try to set this up. I was on Twitter the other day. This is probably like Saturday, and I get a message from one of the viewers, one of the listeners. His name is Bill Moro Seven. Okay. And Bill Moro Seven is the biggest OJ fan there is. Well, so he's the one that came up. He's the one that came up with the OJ title for you. Okay, he wrote it in the comments section. I think on uh, one of Phil's videos that you should be called OJ. He also wrote 
a glowing review of you that we read on, on air, I think one of the first episodes of the show. Yeah. So this dude at Bilmer07, he sends me a Twitter message. What do you call that? A tweet? A, twi- a tweet. A tweeter? A tweet. I don't know what it's called. A tweet. A tweet. Okay. <laughs> Just imagine myself 10 years ago saying tweet. I probably would have punched myself, but I got a tweet, and he says, <laughs> he says John, I live in, in uh, Nevada near Vegas, and I want to meet OJ. So I throw Belmore your email address, and you actually met up with Belmore 07, one of the listeners. Yes, I did. This is incredible. <laughs> I, don't think Jay, I don't think Jay Leno does this for his fans. <laughs> you know, I don't think David Duchovny does that. David Duchovny, oh gosh. I don't think he would do that. Jeff Goldblum <laughs> wouldn't do it. OJ meets up with one of the fans. So kind of tell, tell everyone what happened with this. All right. Well, uh, this is actually the night I ate Dairy Queen. This was, I believe, Sunday. Um, yeah, I'd gotten a message from Belmore um, at my email address, and then uh, then he had then um, I gave him a, we gave him a contact number for my phone so we could organize. And I wasn't sure what was happening that night because I was with my friends. We were supposed to go somewhere. And we didn't know exactly what time we'd be getting back. I ended up leaving that early and not actually eating any food, so I was starving. But uh, yeah, I, I met him um, just outside the Coca Cola store in uh, Las Vegas and it was wow. yeah it was a great deal of it was fun we uh went to we walked walked through the Coca-Cola store a little bit we uh got uh he got a coke slurpee which was only a dollar and i got myself a uh, blue raspberry fanta wow yeah we hung out what, what, what was it like when he met you was he very happy to, oh he was a nice guy you? man he's a pretty cool guy he's uh getting through his last semester in school was he happy um, to to meet you yeah yeah he was really cool he was a lot of fun. Um, we, uh, yeah, he wanted to show me around a bit, so we went to the M&M store next door, too, which is pretty cool. And then uh, stepped outside, took a look around the strip a little bit, and then we went into GameWorks, where him being the generous person he is, he pulls out this ancient, ancient GameWorks card. He, he, he shows it to the guys and says, well, it has a barcode, but it's still good. They scan it. It's got like 120 credits on it, which is about maybe 20 bucks, maybe, uh, worth of gaming. Yeah. And then we... Uh, Wandered through the game works. Uh, we played some games. Uh, played you're on Mario you're Kart. Nice to him. Oh, dude! Of course, he was awesome. I hope so. First of all, I'm going to say that's a lot of trust on your end to give. You don't even know who this person is. You gave him your phone number. First of all, so hopefully you were nice to him because he could he can throw your number all all around. Yeah, you could write it on like stalls and bathrooms, <sighs> things like that. But you were you were nice to him. It was okay. Yeah, he was nice. I'm gonna. Well, my friends okay. are concerned that they were going to find me in the desert. Um, just well, buried would, somewhere. Okay. No, I mean, we kind of we don't know we didn't we don't know him in a way we kind of do because there is some history there. So it was kind of it was, it was a nice thing. And, I, and um, it was really cool that you took time to to meet someone like that. No, it was fun. Totally so, worth it. Yeah. Oh, and uh, we had it was pretty fun. We did try playing Marvel vs. Capcom too. And Again, uh, this game. yeah, well, here's the deal. I chose the left stick. He chose the right. His stick only moved up and down. Mm-hmm. He couldn't block. He couldn't do specials. He could do practically nothing. He couldn't pick anybody outside of the middle row of characters. And even so, I barely beat him. <laughs> Sounds like most of the arcades when the game was new, actually. Stuff doesn't work, but uh, yeah. that's how it usually always was. It's but uh, sad. That's cool. So, and, and you also said you told me that you uh, took a video with him as well? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we took some video. It was. Uh, I'm hoping to get that stuff up on my channel. It was uh, pretty fun. <laughs> Yeah, you know, OJ would meeting the fans, doing work, promotion. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, I should have given you. I, I'm actually getting uh, business cards made up nice. for uh, for the show. So too bad we didn't have them ready because I would have given them to you. Yeah, I, I actually brought my own cards with me, but I forgot to give them out whenever people asked. Like, oh, Belmore, my gosh, he was my hero. He tried to uh, get the girl at the Coke store. He's like, yeah, this guy's pretty big. This guy's famous. <laughs> You know, he's a pretty he's uh, pretty big on YouTube, and she's like, "What? You own YouTube?" I'm like, "No, no, no, I have a channel." She's like, "A channel? Yeah, I got ten thousand. We, we, yeah, my friend's channel." Didn't care about that. She was into the, yeah, she was into the fact that you owned YouTube. She thought you were Mr. Google. Yeah, Belmore was like, "Dude, what's wrong with you, man?" Yeah, man. Should, yeah, uh, you I was just building it up. And I'm like, "Sorry, dude. I'm not. I didn't know what was going on." And you didn't technically lie to her because you didn't actually say that in the first place. Yeah, I know. I, I know. I technically wouldn't yeah. have lied, but you know. I, being being lying lying is not my thing. I'm so terrible. Belmore Belmore was nice enough to meet you, and he was also trying to set you up with. Yeah, yeah, he's a cool guy. This, uh, statesman, or, I don't know how you'd say that word. <sighs> I don't know, of, man. 
<laughs> but all I was going to say was uh, what you should have done with your business cards is when you walk down the strip and those guys give you the cards. Trade them. Uh, Trade them. Yeah, I yes. wanted to do that, but I kept forgetting to bring them with me. Like, I just kept, I forgot them in my backpack every time. Did you collect the whole set of the chick cards? Oh, heck no. I just, I, I, I just didn't take any. You just rejected them. Yeah, but there were some hilarious, like, there were billboards for hot girls direct to your door, and their phone number was nothing but the number 69. It was pretty funny. Some of them have, like, uh, na- like nudity on the cards. Pretty crazy. Yeah, some of them have nudity. Some of them have stars over the, you know, over uh, the important bits. Some are just completely nude. Yeah, and they're pretty pushy. Go. Like, hey, you guys want to go to a club? But the worst was uh, this guy was, you know, going, was going up to, you know, one of those dudes was going up to this other guy who was just walking by. He's like, hey, dude, you want to go to a club? Go to a nightclub? And the guy was just, like, shouting, girls! girls at the guy who was trying to hand him a card being a moron. Like yeah, the, guy, yeah. the tourist guy was being a jerk. So the guy with the card, after the guy started walking away, said, don't worry, we cater to the handicapped. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of harsh. All right, so uh, what, what else do you have to say about Vegas? We've got to wrap that up. But uh, any other uh, special things you want to say about go, it? Go see Absinthe. It is hilarious. And the acts are all really cool. Um... There is some other interesting acts that um, are really weird. We saw, eh. so we were supposed to go to the Grand Can- fly to the Grand Canyon on Monday. Yeah, but yeah, whatever with that. It was canceled due to. Um, it was canceled due to, what's it called? Uh, weather. Um, yes. They told us to meet them outside our hotel near the concierge desk at eleven at ten fifty five. We're out there at 10.50 waiting till about 11.05, and we don't see anything. We call yeah. them, and they say it was canceled due to weather because apparently there was some either like strong winds or snow at the Grand Canyon. So wow. they just so you didn't get to go it. at all? Yeah, so we had to figure out something else to do that day. So we wandered around and gambled a little bit. We, uh, Gosh, I don't remember what we ate. I honestly can't. That's kind of creepy to me. Um, but then we – oh, maybe, I think we might have gone back to Serendipity that day. That might because we had to we, we had to go back to try and get you know make it so that we got to finish our ice cream. So you got off a plane, immediately got pastries, and now you're going to Serendipity more than one one occasion. Yeah, because I only got to eat three of my six fried Oreos and a quarter of the ice. Wow, cream. fried Oreos! What the? What are you doing to yourself, man? It was delicious. It was so worth it, dude. What I've had the, a deep the hell, I've had a deep fried cheeseburger stuffed with cheese before. Did Belmore 07 talk to you about this? Thought you, you should be eating these, these foods? No, no, he was pretty cool. He should have, uh, he should have scolded you. If I was there, I certainly would have. <laughs> but, uh, so that was fun. I mean, yeah, but we, since we had all this free time, we'd heard there was a Cirque du Soleil show that was supposed to be pretty cool. And, unfortunately, it was pretty cool, but only if you were a couple. We uh, went to see the Cirque du Soleil show Zumanity. What the hell is that? Don't see it. It's not bad, <laughs> but if you go, bring your girlfriend or bring your boyfriend. It's apparently the sensual side of Cirque du Soleil. Ugh. And first is of that all... Like, my... Was that people dressed as like animals and fairies like making out on stage? No, though there was some di- guy who looked like it, like he was a demon um, sniffing like around. He was making out with chicks and stuff. They weren't fully making out, but there was some simulated... Was, gro- was there gro- was groping? No, there was a one woman in chains hanging from the ceiling pretending to... Uh, have a dude on top of her. There was some ass play. No, no, no. Like basically, that show is for couples to uh, enjoy and then go back to their hotel rooms with a bottle of scotch or wine or right. something. But uh, well, what was funny wow. is that my friend ordered like the special seats because he thought they'd be better seats. And what they give you is for every two people, you get a love seat, like this little love seat. And fortunately, we were all the way in the back. You know, we were close, but all the way in the back. And no one sat behind us, so after a while, two of, two of us just moved into the row behind us. And at that point, and shortly thereafter, one of the uh, male dancers from the show came over to ask us which of the dancers we were watching, the men or the women. Oh! <laughs> what did you say? And they were swiftly told the women, and we were not, um, and no one else from the show came by our section ever again, <laughs> which was for the best. Wow. Yeah, it was awkward. All right, well, I mean, that's a good place to, to end the, uh, the Vegas vacation. I'd say the acrobatics were cool, but it was a little creepy. And uh, so you left Vegas on Wednesday or Tuesday? Left Vegas on Tuesday. Where the hell are you now? I don't even know where you are. Um, I, there was something. I, ha- I had to go fly out to see a friend in Austin, Texas. So I'm in that's Texas. Where you're, currently, you're currently in Texas now. Yeah, I'm in Texas. 
Where are you going next? Belgium? Uh, I would love to Jamaica. Return to Belgium. Belgium is one of my favorite countries on the planet. But no, next I'm going back to good old New York. I need to go back to New York. Well, Connecticut for you. Yeah, well, New York still I can. Via New York. Yeah. All right, so we've done about let's see here, we've done about 35 minutes already. So I want to get to a few comments. We're not really going to get to too many because we do have a guest coming on yeah, in, yeah. Uh, in a little bit. So I just want to get through a few questions, perhaps. And don't worry, my friends. I will save the comments for next time or a future date. So uh, if we don't get to your comment now, we will get to it in the future. Do not worry. Do not send me hate mail. I'm not ignoring you. I have great love for you all. <laughs> in my heart and in other places as well. Don't ask. All right, so if we could, just go, go through a couple comments. Uh, the first one is from the Rukati. And he says there are still plus 70,000 without power here in Massachusetts. What a crazy storm. I love the show. Seriously, it's better than anything that's ever on TV. What do you think uh, about that? that that's real, I mean, it's, it's terrible that they're still without power, but I'm glad that we're there for an hour, hour and a half every week keeping hope alive. Yeah, I mean, we may have a better product than what's on TV, but people on TV get paid a lot more than us, so they win the battle in the end. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Take that, television. You have my ire. Yes. Um, and the next comment is from, from Big Bird and White Boy. I don't know if that's two people or one person with two names. He says, just got my electricity back on, and the first thing I did was watch the show. <laughs> First thing I did was uh, clean up all the things I knocked over in the darkness oh. and uh, showered, Overrated. played some games. But that's, that's pretty awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. We're awesome honored. Show is always a good thing. Uh, next one is from BLS123POP. And this person says, Hey, John Rambo, I was wondering if you are going to be playing King of Fighters 13, and if you were going to collaborate with Phil in that game, since he's getting the game as well. I am getting the game, looking forward to it. It comes out on November 22nd, for those that may be interested in it. Um, there's actually going to be a tournament in my area like four days later. Oh, nice. And I may actually participate in that. I'm not sure, but right now that's the plan. I'm going to do that. I don't know if I'm going to be doing any uh, collaborations with Phil or anything like that, but um, there is a good YouTube channel. I think it's Atlas USA. Atlas is is uh, publishing the game. They have a lot of tutorials oh, cool. on there. Oh, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, for people that want to get into King of Fighters maybe the first time, that's a great place to check out. I think that's the uh, YouTube address. Yeah. By the way, is it's it a, positive? Is it a dream match or is it story? I believe it's a whole new story. Oh, cool. Well, as long as they have favorite characters. Well, Kyo, but it's not like it has Vice in it. I think it has uh, Mature. The Frel, man. Bring back I don't, I don't even know. I, I don't know. Bring back I should probably know this, but... <laughs> well, we'll find out in a few weeks. It's going to be a cool game. Uh, next comment is from PS3 TNA. A PlayStation 3. Total non-stop action fan, perhaps. And he I says, would you like to stay shitty and ballsy, my friends? And this man has combined the phrases, would you like some balls? Shitty game, shitty player, shitty commentary, and stay ballsy, my friends. And he's created one giant slogan. Incredibly. <laughs> it's like a Katamari of cleverness. And then we have Ryan to WN for me. And he says, I personally don't think we're ready for the epicness of shitty and ballsy. Therefore, I think we should stay at shitty or ballsy for now. Great show, by the way. I kind of agree with that. I think I think the co combination is too potent. It's too powerful of a combination. Um, and on the, on the other hand, I think perhaps the phrases are more are stronger on their separate own ways. What do, you, what do you think about this? Well, it does give us a wider variety. Plus, I can actually say one of the... If you combine them, I can't say the catchphrase. Okay, because you you're, you're against filthy language. I'm not against it. But not against filthy thoughts. Oh, no. Here, I'll have one right now. Wow. Okay, there we go. I'm back. They're not a bit about me. I'm going to be upset. Oh, gosh, no. Barf. <laughs> All right, uh, we got one from Mr. Fuji Film. He's a great guy. He's commented before. He's a fan of the shooters. He says, hey, John, are you a fan of pinball? And if so, have you ever been to the Pinball Hall of Fame in Vegas? Oh, God damn it. I guess you didn't go. Oh, that would have been awesome. 
He goes on to say, also, OG and John, what other places have you been to around the world besides Japan? I love the show. Best part of your channel. Um, I guess we'll... Actually, I want to hold off on that second part. We'll actually answer that another time because due to time constraints. But um, I have not gone to the Pinball Hall of Fame. I would like to go. I'm a big fan of all things arcade. Yeah. And things like that. I'm not very good at pinball. Mm -mm. But I do appreciate it. I would like to go to that. And I guess you didn't go to it. I would love... Yeah, I'm so sad. I would have loved to have gone. That would have been incredibly awesome. I love pinball. Well, perhaps maybe we'll find ourselves in Vegas someday and we'll put that on the list. Yeah, I flip out for pinball. And uh, I promise we will answer the rest of that question. It's kind of a loaded question. What other places have you been to around the world? We'll answer that in a future time. Okay. I promise. Um, We have... You have yet another female listener right here. Greetings from Florida. It's from Leila Alvar. We always like to hear from our female listeners. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're getting closer to the East Coast here. Wow, what, what are you what are you applying here? <laughs> Why do you have to ruin everything? I ruin everything, dude. Give me a break. You do. You ruin everything. No, but Florida, that's a nice place, though. I would like to do some type of uh, female-centric episode. I don't know what that would be. I would like all the female listeners to maybe uh, suggest topics, and uh, we can do like a show. For like a question and answer? Just... Like another like another Rambo's mailbag. Except there'll be a Rambo, sure. Rambo's female bag. What? What? What the? What? Everything you say is dirty, man. It's not dirty. It's a pun. Oh, that is dirty. I'm we're sorry. Still, I, I meant it. Like, no, I meant it like mailbag because that's what you said. You know, M A I L, but it rhymes. Gosh darn okay, it! That's not what no. I meant, dude. That is I'm not saying, what I meant. A female centric episode of the show. Yeah. Oh, but, post up topics you would like us to do. Yes. Yes. About if you are a female listener. I yes. Think that'd be, yeah, that cool. would be good. No, that's what I that's what I was getting at. Like when you had people ask you questions before in Rambo's mailbag. I understand, but it's, you're a filthy person. That that was not intentionally uh, filthy. That was unintentionally right. filthy. All right. So uh, next one is from the Gaming Freak One. He says, "No worries, guys. I've injected everyone in my school with the show. I've also spiked the canteen food with the show." <laughs> that is right. You must spread the disease, the digital gonorrhea, the digital herpes. Spread it. That is. It will soon take over the world. You know, if the show had a scent, what would it be? We should think about that. It would It would be shitty. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, we have a very interesting comment from E. Kim Reyes, 10. I'd like you to answer this one first. He says, what size is your penis? Stay ballsy, my friends. So you can go first on this, John. Well. You're waiting. Yeah, I know you're waiting. <laughs> It's uh I don't even I don't even know what you're gonna say. I don't, I don't know. know what I'm you're trying I'm trying to find something clever to say. Here. This is what we should do. You you should take a picture and just send it to this guy because he's very interested in this. Do I look like Anthony Weiner to you? Well this is what he wants. He's very interested, so instead of just describing it, just send him a picture and we'll leave it at that, okay? So that's it for the comments for this week. Oh, you're not you you're not even gonna come up gonna come up with an answer? You're gonna put me on the spot? You're not even gonna say anything? He was directed this at you. He directed it at me? He said, yeah. okay, you're serious. It was directed towards you. So you were going to, that's what my answer, my answer is that you will send him a picture. You know, I mean, if there's a girl he wants satisfied, then, I mean, he can just give me her number directly, but. Yeah, let this, all right, let this go. Let this one go. <sighs> okay, 15 to 20 inches for me, okay? All right, let's leave it at that. <laughs> all right, so next week, next week on the show, <coughs> why are you coughing, man? Because it happens. Okay? Yeah, I'm fine, dude. If you cough, cough off the ca- off the microphone. Sorry, I'm used to having a different mic, man. I'm, I'm not speaking, home. and you're coughing while I'm speaking. <laughs> Are you done? Yes. All right. So next week on the show, if all things go as planned, as they currently are planned, we have a very special guest. <laughs> a very cool guest. I'm um, hoping this works out, and it will actually be the food episode that we talked about. Mm-hmm. So I'd like everyone to do in the comments. Post up your food-related comments and questions, topics, things like that. And we will use them next week's uh, show. It'll be much appreciated. So uh, next week, the food episode. Yeah. Be prepared. So we're going to do We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with our guest for the week. And uh, that's that. So we'll see you in a second. Bye-bye. All right. Welcome back to the show. Our guest for the week can be found at youtube.com slash venomousfatman, where he reviews games, movies, does interviews. He's also the community manager for realotakugamer.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Venomous Fat Man. 
yo, what's happening, people? Hope you all are ready to get epic. <laughs> <laughs> so how's it going today, sir? I'm doing I'm doing great right now. I just had some great news that I'm going to be happy to reveal to you guys first. So oh? it's pretty nuts. Okay, you want to just go for it? or? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, today, you know, well, first things first, I just got back from Chibi Palmoto a couple of days ago, which is an anime convention down here in Florida. And nice. I had an awesome time. I actually got a chance to talk to an interview the guy, his name is Richard Epcar, and if you guys don't know who that is, he's not only the voice of Bato from Ghost in the Shell, but also, <laughs> check this out, check this out. He actually did Ansem in all the Kingdom Hearts games. No way. Yeah, and I was blown. I found out the day I was actually going, I found out I literally nearly crapped my pants. I was like, oh, my God, I have to get my Kingdom Hearts 2. I have to get my Kingdom Hearts recoded to get this man to sign all of them. And that's exactly what happened. He, he was great to hang around with. The interview was funny. We were actually sitting in the middle of this hotel, and he pulls out this giant wine glass, like this ridiculously <laughs> huge wine glass, and he just does the interview just holding that thing. I, I, was, I was on the floor. So he was really cool, cool though. I, I can imagine. Wow. But, but he was really, really fun to hang with. I got to meet the voice actors from Italia, or the guy who plays Spain from Italia. <laughs> That guy is gangster. Like, I don't care what you say. This man shows up at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning on the party floor. He goes over, somebody get me a drink and a cigarette, and, like, seven people brought him the same thing. It was just so awesome. I got to meet him. I got to meet the voice of Dita from Van Dredd. She also does a, their big uh, voice acting names and stuff. And wow. I also got to meet the dude that his name is Robert Axelrod. He's the voice of Lord Zed from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Oh, man. Okay, there's a reference I understand. You speak of my <laughs> language now. But John, John over here is not too much into anime, I could tell. But no. OT over there is like fanboying right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's over there losing his mind. But basically, yeah, I got to meet the guy that does the voice of Lord Zed. He's really old. Real, real, real old. So, so you have all you have this stuff on your channel, all these interviews? Yeah, all that went up that same day I got back. That all went up on my YouTube channel. So oh, brilliant. You guys could see right now. And also pictures. Also on Facebook, on RealTacoGamer.com. Oh, dude. A whole bunch of pieces. But, Very nice. But that wasn't the only thing that happened pretty much within the past couple of days. That was one thing. The second thing I found out, which literally I just found out about today, was that I got quoted in the Sun Sentinel down here in Florida about competitive gaming. Which no is fine. So that was that. And they also mentioned, which leads to my third thing, the event that's happening tomorrow, which is the Modern Warfare 3 launch event at Flippers 360 here in uh, Hollywood, Florida, that I'm hosting. Yeah, why don't we, uh, why don't we get right into that, actually, um, since you brought it up. You're running an event for Call of Duty. Is, is it just for Call of Duty or other games as well? Or? Here's the cool thing. It, the big thing, the big draw for it is that it's only for Modern Warfare 3. That's Call of Duty, pretty much for the most part. However, however, here's the big cool part about it is that we're doing it in this giant room, which is pretty much like two movie theaters compact, you know, opened up into one or combined. And they're putting 100 plus Xbox 360s and PC setups that are lined up under they got like 16 pc setups all over and with their own tvs and stuff like that all playing different games i know like 50, like 30 to 50 of them are going to be running straight up modern warfare 3 come tomorrow night but the rest of them literally you could play whatever you want so if you want to rep battlefield 3 in the middle of all that modern warfare 3 chaos you could do that and you could do it on the pc which is even funnier you may get attacked though by the call of duty fans yeah exactly possibility <laughs> yeah <laughs> fans but besides that you can play whatever you want we got free food we got a dj which is free food unbelievable so it, it's gonna be a fun night i mean it's gonna last from like just before midnight till about eight o'clock in the morning the following day so it's gonna be a non-stop crazy party i'm looking forward right, so where can we find out about this event online is your website you could yes you could you could actually go to flipperscinema.com or if you just google flippers 360 it's like the first link that pops up you have to pre-register to get into the event by the time i'm pretty sure that this goes up the event either will be going on right now or already be done but in order for people to get into the event you have to actually register pre-register your name and you have to be over 16 years of age so there'll be no little kids that'll be <laughs> shouting all these racist at you when you're playing Call of Duty or none of those uh, like, homosexual puns or anything like that. Oh, <laughs> so because you know a lot of people complain about that, so we're like, you know what? Let, let's just make it that way, so that way it'd be a lot more fun for everybody. And uh, I'm sure you're going to be taking video of that event for your channel as well. Oh, oh hell yeah! I'm going to be yeah. I'm going to be all over the place, man. I'm just getting a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, the best part is, which I recently started doing, was that I started uploading my videos in HD. Because I actually nice. have a camera yeah. that can upload them in 720p HD. So 
I mean, the only problem with it is that it's not going to have, like, any of, like, the crazy little, like, logos and stuff that I'm usually used to doing. And stuff. it mm-hmm. just goes straight up like that. So it's pretty cool. Sounds good. Something to look forward to. Uh, so if you're in the in the area there, what what, exa- what, t- what city is that? Okay, the Florida. exact place is Hollywood, Florida. The exact address, you know, could be found on the website, but it's on Taft Street. It's the big movie theater called Flipper Cinema. The, and, all that is on the website there for all you guys. What's so the website it's, again? It's FlipperCinema.com. But if you go to Google and you d- put in uh, Flippers 360, it's literally like the first link that pops up. Nice. All right, so... Uh, just want to get into some kind of interview interview type segment. All right, cool. Um, you actually did an interview with me last year. Yes, you were you were like one of my first big big interviews. First, you know, people on YouTube. <laughs> like, yeah, so that goes that credit goes to John people. So it goes to well, like, I, I, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I think it's actually the most viewed video on your channel. No, 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 no. it's the second most viewed video on my channel. Believe it or not, right, it's the most viewed interview though, right? It's the second most viewed interview period that I. Who's the first uh, the, most I mean, viewed interview? The first one is is Phil is DSP. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, check I, this check this right now. <laughs> check this right now, people. Like literally right now. I was shocked. I knew I was gonna get a big hits when I did Phil, and I obviously knew I was gonna get a big hits when I did with you, but I'm still surprised that literally like the first part of Phil's video is the number one most viewed video that I have on my channel. This is all acceptable to me. I'm gonna check this we're checking this right out. <laughs> John, I, I'm supposed to be the one with an ego here. <laughs> John's going into fanboy mode. Hold up. Hold I, I, I'm, I'm not special anymore. Are we checking? Everyone's checking? You're, you're OJ. You're the other John. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's your point. Good point. Uh, yeah. I can't check because this computer might melt. <laughs> I'm checking. Hold on. We're checking numbers, people. That's how real it is. We're that's checking numbers. The show is. Don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll keep the show going while you guys check numbers. Yeah. Jeopardy music going on and stuff. That's how you know it's people. All right. I'm going to most viewed on your channel. All right. Go to uploads most viewed, right? It's the, what is it? If you go to, uh, I believe, yeah, I'm not sure. You know what? I don't think I've done it that same way. Because the way I look at it is I go to my videos like that and I look just click on views. Okay. And it'll, and it'll show, what is it? Uh, most the way I just did it, I have the top views because I went to, on your front page, I went to upload. And I went to- no, no, no. He passed Phil. He passed Phil by like 4,000 views. Wow. So I, I am correct. Yes, you are correct. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Dun, I have dun, the dun, top, dun. the most viewed video, most viewed interview over Dark Set Phil, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have to get you a medal or something, dude. I want some sort of venomous Fat Man trophy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's going to say epic on the side of it. An epic trophy. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm getting a little, uh, obviously I'm joking around, but uh, <laughs> I really appreciated that you had me on. And I, was, I just kind of started my channel uh, at that at that point. Mm-hmm. So uh, you were the first one that kind of reached out and didn't want to do something with me. So I really appreciated uh, that. So I wanted you to have you on my show and uh, kind of return the favor. Ah, anytime, bro. No need to return. All right. Um, one thing I want to ask you, every time I watch your videos or I see you on YouTube, you always have a very positive demeanor about you, mm-hmm. a lot of positive energy. And um, I was wondering how, this is something I struggle with quite often. How are you such a positive person? Why are you such a positive person? Well, it's a combination of things. Number one, okay, because obviously people are going to want to watch stuff that, you know, gives them a positive mood or they get something good out of it. They don't want to see constantly somebody that gets on YouTube or gets on a video that's like constantly depressed and stuff like, Hi, <laughs> my name is Venomous Fat Man. <laughs> and this game sucks. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, sorry, no. You know, nobody wants to see that constantly. So you got to have a little more energy. You have to little have a little more, uh, what is it, electricity, a little more kind of enthusiasm of what you do. So that way when people are watching your stuff, you know, they get excited and they have a good time watching and they want to come back for more later on. Right. But at the same time, you know, that it's not always, uh, what is it, I don't always have like, you know, good positive energy that always comes towards my videos, especially from a lot of the viewers and stuff. Because I've done some controversial stuff in the past, like much yeah. within like the past like five, six months, I would say. Something like that. Well, I, let me kind of rephrase. You always have a very, you're very enthusiastic about what you're speaking about, very passionate about what you're speaking about. So, um, yeah. how do you, where does that come from? 
Uh, it just comes naturally. I mean, I've watched plenty of other videos. I mean, I've seen Phil's videos. I've seen stuff from Jeff Keighley, you know, Kevin Pereira, Adam right. Sessler, a whole bunch of people, you know, that, you know, put themselves out there in the spotlight, you know, that are a part of different organizations, different groups are just doing their own thing. And I try to, you know, get at least, you know, a little bit of everything as much as I can to kind of implement it. It's my own stuff. So that way I could kind of come off as my own personality and my own flavor, my own flair and stuff. Okay. Uh, so you mentioned that sometimes you have controversial things to say. Maybe you receive some negative feedback from time to time. Oh my God, you're the you uh, half. <laughs> so <laughs> my question is, how do you how do you deal? Everyone on YouTube, it, it takes a certain amount. I think it takes a certain amount of bravery to put yourself out there on videos and things like that. Yes. I think everyone that everyone gets a certain amount of negative um, feedback from people. How do you deal with that personally? The neg- negativity from uh, certain individuals. Well, there's you could deal with it in a bunch of different ways. I mean, the, the easiest way is to always like combat it, always try to stand against it and stuff. And usually, it, it yields like different types of results depending on what type of person you are. But usually, the way I usually approach it, if it's not something that's really not paramount and it's kind of stupid or ridiculous and stuff, I usually pay no mind to it. Like people get on my case because I tend to get rid of and ninja out a lot of the comments on some yeah. of the more controversial videos. Like I did a video about F. FNEX. I don't know if you guys know what FNEX is. Oh, wow. No. Uh, Financial no. is some group that, you know, they're, they're into fighting games and the fighting game scene and they put themselves on a high pedestal and stuff and I called them out on it and I told them, like, listen, you know, you can't do stuff like that and they got kind of mad at me about it so they started flaming my video and, like, saying all kinds of mean stuff and I actually got, like, a ton of responses from, like, you yeah. know, those particular people and, like, real nasty responses, like, video responses and things like that. So, yeah. usually, I, I'm not ashamed to block somebody on YouTube. I mean, I don't care. Usually, when it comes to that, I don't care about, you know, getting rid of a comment or something because it's not paramount to me. It doesn't affect me emotionally. It doesn't affect me in my personal life. And what's funny is, too, is that, you know, when you put enough time and dedication and you put yourself, you know, within that certain kind of, you know, that uh, aura around you or that kind of personality that you try to exhume on your videos and stuff, your fans will actually come out and help you. It was funny because in that particular video, I had a bunch of fans actually putting in the comment section telling them, like, listen, you guys are jerks and, you know, you guys are acting like retarded and stuff and you're proving every single point of what Venomous Batman just said right now. You know, it, it's pretty funny. Right. Like that. Yeah, like, I feel like a lot of the negativity is actually a sign of success in a lot of ways. Yes, you know? very true. It's kind of interesting in that regard. If you don't have haters, you're doing something wrong. Right. I always feel like you can't really take it personally because these people don't know you personally. Exactly. So you can't really look at that that way and just move on. Just and you're certainly you know you're certainly allowed to remove comments. I think it's your channel. You can run it the way you like to uh, run. OJ, what is going on? Yeah, sorry, OJ. I was inhaling. Why are you doing it into the microphone, dude? I, like sneezing. I'm not, you can't inhale into a microphone. Are you do Are you doing coke or something? What's going on? Man? You smoke in the microphone. What happened? No, it is super dry here. My nose is all dried out. Why I'm you? Sorry. Why are you? Do- <laughs> <laughs> Tony Montana. I'm in the play. desert, dude. Yeah. I'm in the desert trying to breathe. It's not easy. I I, I will lift the mic up. Sorry about okay that. Now? Yeah, I'm okay. I didn't mean to bug you guys. You should have no, I'm sorry. You okay? But but yeah, John, like I was saying, like the energy that you put in combating a lot of that negativity, you could put it more towards improving your channel and actually getting more out of it than what you would the other way. Right. Uh what did you? Why did you uh, decide at some point? You know, I want to make a YouTube channel. I want to. I want to talk to the uh, the people in a, in a public way. Uh, what was the moment you decided? I want to. I want to go on YouTube and put well, videos. At first, like like I said, I started watching a lot of other YouTubers. When I first started, you know, got, and I made my YouTube account. I didn't upload any videos because on that original account that I had, I used to upload uh, videos that weren't like me, like talking on camera stuff. It used to be like if you guys have ever played City of Final Fantasy for the PSP. Yeah, uh, my no friends live in game. Okay, so when the first one came out, they, they gave you a feature that you were able to convert videos of your flights and stuff, and you could upload them to places like YouTube and stuff, and I used to do that a lot. So in the process of doing all that, I used to watch guys. I used to watch Phil's videos, like his earlier videos, and I used to watch guys like the King Kindred, uh, Free One Up, and guys like that, and I saw that they would put themselves on camera and they would talk about different things involving gaming. So I said to myself, you know what, I got something to say about gaming. You know, I love video games probably just as much, if not more, than these guys. And I've been part of video games, you know, video games have been part of my life my pretty much my entire life for the most part. So I might as well try it out. The hardest part was trying to figure out to come up with a name. And that was like right. this ridiculous part of the whole process. But eventually I put myself out there. I think my first video that I ever did was about Tatsunoko versus Capcom. And I did kind of <laughs> it. And it was it people liked it. People started watching it. And that's where it happened. Very cool. Um, 
what would you like? To, what would you like to tell people? Maybe they, if they don't subscribe to you yet, they don't know really what you do. How would you describe your channel? What would you like to tell people that maybe haven't heard of you or yet are yet to subscribe to your channel? All right. Well, basically, you know, for all the guys out there that don't know me, obviously I'm VFM. I'm Venomous Batman. I'm a guy who loves video games just as much as these guys do here on this on this show, as well as anybody else out there. Like I said, games have been part of my entire life. I love talking about games. I love socializing with people about video games and other otaku-related stuff. And basically on my channel, all I do is, is I review games, I talk about games, I talk about movies, I talk about anime, which, you know, not too far from now, a little tidbit for you guys. Pretty soon I'm going to be doing a big thing with movies and movie reviews and premieres and stuff. So that's all I could say on that without getting in trouble. But, <laughs> but basically, that's what I do. And I, I always like going to events. I love going to conventions. As you guys, if you've ever seen any of my videos out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Nobody does a con quite like I do. I always have fun. I always try to make the best of it, big or small convention. And I, I do the best that I can. I try, you know, try my hardest to actually get as much stuff that what I see out there to you guys. And I try to make it, uh, was it a grand old time? I try to make, uh, was it make it fun for everybody? Yep. Good stuff. You you just mentioned conventions. Yep. Uh, we may be going to a convention soon and doing a panel. Oh, nice. So I know that I know that you just recently did a panel at a convention. I did, I did three. Oh. Okay. So what advice do you have for me? I never did one of these before. So what kind of advice would you give? Basically, from what I learned when I went to Chibi Pot, is that one okay. People love free stuff. That's just the <laughs> I know originally I was going to go to all three of my panels. I was originally going to get a bunch of stuff from Bandai and a bunch of stuff from Funimation. But unfortunately, some stuff happened and I wasn't able to. But I also, at the same time, went out and got my own little assortment of free stuff to give to the people out there. Like I gave them free manga and posters and stuff like that. So people love free stuff. That's just a given. The second thing is... Is that, you know, you, when you come out on a stage and stuff, you know, you have to make it interesting. You have to make people have a good time when they're going there. Because keep in mind, people go into these conventions, they're paying like $45, $50 for the weekend or for that day. Even, and they don't want to go to like a boring panel. Because I've been to panels where the people, you know, are like these crazy stars, you know, either movie stars or voice actors. They're really popular. And their panels are just god awful boring. <laughs> and I've seen people walk out on them. It, it's the funniest thing. I mean, it sucks when you're hosting a panel and people walk out on you, but that also tells you that you're not doing something right, that you're not doing something interesting enough to make them want to stay on the edge of their seat watching. <laughs> so the best thing to do is to try as hard as you can to find anything and everything that can make your panel interesting enough so that way people could stay in their seats and also people that are in the back that are just walking by the panel room will want to come inside and actually see what's up. Free money and nudity, I think, will work. There you go. That's a plan. Make it happen. Bingo. Yeah. Is there any chance of you coming to uh, MAGFest in uh, Maryland? Oh, my God. I wish I could go because I've actually wanted to go to MAGFest for, like, the past, like, couple of years. And I haven't yeah. been able to. And this one, I don't think so because my next con, more than likely, that I'm going to be doing is either going to be Chibi Paw Sampler or it's going to be Miami Comic Con in February. Right. Well, if you uh, if you find your way there, I think it's in January. You can definitely come, you know, sit in our panel and stuff like that, and course, bro. We, bring into the you fold. Know what we need to do. We need to do New York Comic Con because seriously, like I saw you when you guys went to New York Comic Con. I was like, yo, guys, you guys got to come with me because you guys will have a blast. <laughs> it's just, nobody does a con like what I do. It's, Let's it's, do it. Twenty twelve. There you go. Bam. We're gonna make this happen. All right. So one, the other thing you're involved in, uh, realtakugamer.com. Yeah. So it's, it's a website, uh, game community. You actually did an interview with the Don't Blow This Guys, me, me and Howard and Chris. Yes. yes. And then you did an article up on that site. So yep. what can you tell us about the website and what's going on over there? Okay, so realtacogamer.com. I'm the community manager over there. Basically what ROG is, is it's a website that does that pretty much covers everything about gaming, about anime, manga, comics, sci-fi, anything that's otaku related or part of otaku culture, that's what we cover. We cover everything. Now, lately, you know, we haven't been really hitting a lot of conventions, save for me with like Chibi Pa and Chibi and things like that, because our goal, our ultimate goal, at least my ultimate goal, is to be able to go to E3 and to also go to TGS and to things like PAX East and PAX Prime and stuff. But basically, we cover most of that, you know, most of that news, most of that actual, uh, was it, area of otaku culture. So we do reviews, we do previews, we do all kinds of crazy stuff. So if you're into any of that stuff, you want to check us out because we do things our own way and we're different from a lot of the bunch that's out there. 
you know, it's not it's not like you're gonna see the same thing like what IGN, Kotaku, G4, uh, was it G4, and Game Trailers are gonna be putting up. No, we have something completely different. So it might be on the same subject matter, but you're gonna get a different flavor every time. All right. So it's kind of outside of the uh, the corporate structure of a lot of these other. Well, yeah, it's a smaller places. site. We're not a AAA site. You know, we would love to be a AAA site. It'd be dope. But we're a much smaller site. But we have our own stuff and our own ways of approaching things. All right, so we're uh, we're kind of like hitting hitting the end of the holiday season of games. Mm. What games have you been playing the last couple months? What are your, what are your thoughts on some, on your favorite stuff and all right? So all that. The, one thing I have to say though is that not so long ago, my console, my Xbox, got Red Ring of Death, and I oh, was yeah, about that. Right. But luckily, this is why friends are awesome because they always have a console available for you to play, and there's always you know like different like lounges down here in Florida where you could go to and play different games. So a lot of the games I'm able to play and review and stuff, I usually play in another location, even though I don't own the console. So with that being said, recently I just played some Battlefield 3. It's awesome. It's amazing. I had the nicest match of Battlefield 3 I probably ever had in my entire life. Because literally we're playing on Operation Metro. Within like a couple minutes, we dominated that whole map and just held it down. It was a wrap. But besides that, I've also played some Batman Arkham City. Yeah, it's awesome. Batman Arkham City, hands down, is right now my game of the year. I mean, I haven't wow. played. Did you uh, did you play Uncharted three? I, I was just gonna say that I haven't played Uncharted <laughs> three yet. However, however, okay. Number one, I'm hoping tomorrow when I go to Flippers that somebody that I know that has a PS3 will help me out to play Uncharted three because I want right. to play a campaign because I watched Phil's footage of it. And yeah. It was cool. However, you know, without spoiling anything, I felt that the ending. To Batman had a much more bigger impact, and that's why it's still my game of the year. But yeah, for me, it's really between those two right now. Yeah, I think I played most of the people releases, but those are really the two that stand out for me right now. I'm trying to. Some people are saying Skyrim. One. Some people are still saying Skyrim. I know IGN posted a review of Skyrim. I think it comes out tonight, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think 11, so. 11. Yeah, 11, 11, 11, something like that. But yeah, I'm not so sure right now because, like I said, Bat from what Batman has done, and from what I'm hearing, what Uncharted has done, you know, it's going to be really hard to topple those games. Yeah, I mean they're both incredible games. You know, I've definitely played both. You don't need to, one doesn't have to win over the other. I think people understand that. No, yeah. have to, <laughs> yeah, better. They got two for one sales at Target. Yeah, there they did, go. man. There yes. <laughs> My favorite thing about Batman, like the storyline, was how comfortable all the characters like were with each other. Even like the villains, like Batman knows all their first names, and he's like, "Oh, you're doing this again." And that's kind of interesting. That that game is literally a love letter to Batman because yeah, yeah, yeah. that you read in the comics and the movies or the cartoons yep. and stuff, it's somewhere in that game. And the best part is like the coolest moment I thought was when you actually go to the site where uh, Bruce's parents died and you actually have that moment of silence. It's not yes. so much the fact that you know you're doing that, but just the atmosphere and the was it the setup that it does for you with the the whole kind of music and everything. It's so gritty. It works. And it's yeah. perfect for that character. And it's like, damn, these guys really know what they're doing with Batman. Like, I would love to see Rocksteady take on another superhero. Because if they did that well with Batman, it's about time somebody did a really good Superman game. Or some other, like, you know, DC character. Like, I, I always said to my friends on the po- uh, G401 podcast that imagine those guys took, like, the same principles from, like, Red Dead Revolver and did, like, a Jonah Hex game. How oh, awesome man. would that be? Yeah, they really took the best parts of the Batman universe, like you said, and, and put them all in the game. And you can really, I don't see why you can't apply that to other superheroes. Yeah, you could apply that like, same design principle to any superhero, or any property, plain, plain and simple. Like, if they did that with Spider-Man, it would be awesome, or yep. X-Men. I mean, oh, be, man. there's so much lore to drive from those characters. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, I would think that'd be really, really appealing to <laughs> What the hell are you doing? Sorry, with? I covered my mouth. I moved the thing away. All right, all right. You went, <laughs> you went from like dopey to sneezy. I'm like, all right, so <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I think you, you would think it would be very uh, appealing to these game makers to take one of these pre existing superheroes that have established characters and worlds and things and, and do something on a grand scale instead of, you know, having to create an entire universe for like a new property. But if you take these, you know, these, these existing characters, you could do something really amazing with them because like they already have a, you know established stuff to them so. i mean it's not even that also just the way that batman looks and the way that you view the entire game like i don't know if you guys ever saw the leaked avengers footage for the avengers movie no. did you guys see that okay check this out imagine playing a game like fallout or crossed with mirror's edge 
but it's set in the Avengers universe. And it plays wow. like all the action and craziness you would think with the amalgamation between those two. It looks awesome with Batman. What looks what's so cool, and especially it's such a huge jump from Arkham Asylum to Arkham City, is that you could actually like the, the only way that they're going to get bigger and better is if they, they actually give you all of Gotham City to actually play around with. Because it's always like a like a kind of like, you know, a question, like how Batman actually maneuvers around, actually gets around the different environments, the buildings and stuff. And right. Batman Arkham City did it so well that it's just like, damn, it's just, it's, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect for the character. Like, I'm telling you, the next Batman game that's done by Rocksteady, they have to give you the ability to play the, with the Batmobile, to actually drop yep. the Batmobile from the Batcave and be able to go all around Arkham, or uh, what is it, Gotham City. It, it'd be the perfect Batman game. Some sort of uh, co-op campaign would be pretty interesting too, with like a Robin. Yeah, Robin. Or, yeah there you go. Batwoman uh, co-op type of thing. That'd be amazing. That'd be interesting. Uh, are you an Assassin's Creed guy? Are you interested yes. in the, the new yes. games? I'm an Assassin's Creed 2 fan. Okay. Because Assassin's Creed 1 was okay, but I didn't like the story too much. I didn't like Altair as a character, but Ezio is a much better character. They've yeah, I didn't like the, uh, the repetition for the first game is, was kind of uh, annoying, but they really nailed it with the second game, the third game I like, and um, mm-hmm. see how this one turns out, too. Exactly. Um, all right, so got a couple questions from the audience I'd like to throw your way, see if you want to uh, <laughs> okay. throw some answers out. The audience. But I have a comment from... What is that noise, dude? What noise? Are we good? I didn't what? hear anything. I didn't hear anything. All right. All right, we'll cut that out. <laughs> what that was. <laughs> All right, we'll cut that out. But uh, we have a comment from Austin115845. He says, The PS Move and Connect both fell flat on its face, even though it was called the next generation of gaming. In your opinion, what is the next generation of gaming, or is gaming good the way it is now? Gaming is good now, bro. I mean, I understand what he's saying as far as like the, is the whole idea is motion control and the Wii is the one that kind of got there first and they did it on a so, sort of kind of like a basic level for everybody because, you know, they were trying to appeal to a general audience. What was the problem with the Kinect is that one, there's no controller and, you know, if you're playing games, the only real way that a game is going to work right, especially for gamers of, you know, past and present generation is if they have something in their hand to control. And especially with, like, the whole kind of, you know, syncing up with the actual Kinect's motion sensor and stuff, especially, like, if you wear dark clothing and stuff, it doesn't work right. And a lot of games fall flat on their face because of that. You know, a lot of great games, like, if you could have taken a game like Sonic Riders, I think it is. Like, as bad as that game might be, if it had better control overall, it would have been much viewed in a much better light than what it was. You know, yeah, I did play that one, so uh, kind of rough. I mean, I mean, in all extensive purposes, that game's bad, but you know, it could have you know really been greatly improved by that. The thing with right. Sony Move is, is that there's not a lot of good Sony Move games. I know you could play Killzone, I know you could play Resistance, and there's a couple others you could play with the Sony Move that are in in light in hindsight you could still play with the controller. But the problem is though, okay, like I know there's supposed to be a Connect uh, Star Wars game that comes out, right? That you're supposed to have like an extra like lightsaber controller or something yes. like that with the Connect, even though the Connect is not supposed to have a controller or whatever. Where's my lightsaber game for the Sony Move? Or you know what I'm saying? Or like for the Wii, that would have been the perfect idea or perfect game for those motion control systems because it's a game that's made for motion control and it's a game that people are going to want to check on and going to want to buy. And just it's besides the whole Star Wars name on it and stuff, there's just no real good games for the Connect or the Sony Move. All the games on those on those are uh, was it platforms or those like part of the systems? They suck. They're terrible. That's what, yeah, it's nothing that's like a, a must-play game. Yeah, there is not that, there's not that one piece of software that makes you like, okay, I need to go buy a Sony Move or a Kinect right now. Like That's why I'm saying like we're good with gaming right now. I think we're going to get better as far as graphics, as far as like the, the types of ways that we play games with the controller and stuff like that. Like Uncharted 3, like a lot of people are saying that Uncharted 3 is so awesome. A lot of other games that have been coming yeah. out of this generation need to take design principles from that game and apply it to their own stuff which is, could be true i haven't played the game yet but as far as like gaming the way it is now as far as what we have and how far we're going i think we're good for at least another couple of years because they're saying by 2014 at least or 2013 2014 to 2015 we might be getting the xbox 720 and possibly the playstation 4 right yeah i mean uh, uncharted 3 is as good as any movie i saw this year <laughs> the story <laughs> is uh, incredible yeah. um I think the confusion right now is where is with where to go with games is depending on people's TVs. You know, is it 3D? Well, people don't. Not everyone has a 3D TV. I don't think a lot of people care about 3D right now. I mean, I'm, unless you're watching Avatar, which is a movie made for 3D, I don't think you're really going to care because there's no game that's made for 3D like that yet. 
There's no avatar of gaming right now because we haven't. Yes. I bet you the first person that's probably going to do that is probably going to be someone like Kojima because he's always doing like crazy stuff with his games, like with the Metal Gear franchise and stuff. Yeah. Well, then again, if if, 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 if you know everyone had a 3D TV or if everyone was willing to get one, then they could focus yeah. on that, but not many people do. And there's still people that don't even have HD TVs, and that's kind of too much. Back. Like a, it's just too much like a throw-in right now. Like you could play, you could play almost any of the new, more recent games, like God, uh, was it Arkham City or probably Resistance Three and 3D right now, and still nobody's gonna really care about it. Like you notice that people aren't talking about playing Uncharted Three and 3D right now. Or Cold yeah, I, don't, I don't know one person that has a 3D TV, and you know it's kind of uh... yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, so. you don't want to spend the, like, what is it, 100 bucks for the box and then 100 bucks per set of glasses for each person. I mean, if they could do, like, what the 3DS did and find some way to put it with the TVs where kind of, you know, get a good, where you could be at almost any angle and still get that 3D effect from it without the use of glasses, then they'll have something on their hands, which po- I bet you money they're probably working on something like that now after what Nintendo mm-hmm. did. But there's still a whole bunch of other problems that come with it. There's one, the price. Because let's be real, not a lot of people are going to be able to afford a 3D TV right now, especially a good-sized 3D TV, because a 3D effect, you're going to want a giant TV to really right. experience it, and then a sound system on top yeah. of it. I mean, that's just going to give you the definitive experience. Did you uh, did you play Sonic Generations? No, I'm dying to. I'm dying Please to. Yeah, you should have to play it. It's I awesome. Was, I heard so many good things about it, and I'm a Sonic fan. Sonic the Hedgehog was my favorite <sighs> video game, so I'm dying to play that game. Yeah, it's uh, it's a, it's a, it's excellent. Um, you should definitely play it. It got some low scores in some places, but I don't understand like what what do people you know want it, it to be. Is, I think I know what it is. Why? Because it also happened with a couple other games that came out within this year. Is that one? There's a lot of people that still that don't really kind of like hold like the whole idea of the nostalgic factor. Because let's face yeah. it, all the best stuff about Sonic was back in the good old days. Like there hasn't yeah. been something really good that's new and innovative. With Sonic the Hedgehog. That's why he's been kind of taking a backseat to guys like Mario or any of the other right. like famous bat mascots now these days. Because Sonic, you know, what is it? The only I think they came close with Sonic Colors more right. than anything else, but they just haven't got it right yet. So people are still kind of harping on the fact that Sonic has such a bad rap with everything. Yeah, else. you're right. Yeah, it's, it's, it seemed kind of unfair for Sonic. I think um, if you look at you look at certain places, they gave. The Super Mario Brothers Wii got a very high score, and like Donkey Kong Country Returns got a very high score. But for some reason, Sonic is kind of graded a little more thing, though, For an anniversary for Sonic the Hedgehog, that's the best handled anniversary for a franchise or a mascot that I've ever seen. Like, what they should take that same treatment to like a thing like The Legend of Zelda or even Mario, for that matter, and treat right. it like the same way. Like, give you a new adventure, but give you that same nostalgia from the older games. Yeah, it's, per- it's a perfect formula for an anniversary. Yeah, I felt it actually. I felt it personally was actually better than Donkey Kong Returns and uh, Mario Wii. So yeah, yeah. well, Mario yeah. Wii just felt a little funny to me, but Sonic just played. It was Sonic. You could. It felt like Sonic through and through. I liked, I liked Donkey Kong Country Returns. I thought that game was awesome. Like it was a yeah, really good. good hardcore game for the Wii and stuff. Super Mario Brothers Wii. I felt like you had to play that with four players to really get the definitive experience because you could play it like any other Mario game if you're solo. But I don't know, it's just the, the whole idea with adding the three other people that really adds much more to the gameplay experience. And I'm trying to see, I'm looking forward to seeing like how Sonic Generation is going to play like that on the nostalgic factor. Right. Yeah, hopefully it's sold well and we'll, they'll continue with the Sonic games. So. Yeah, I hope so. Right, you know, one question. What the heck happened to Sonic 4 Episode 2? What happened to that? <laughs> like, like, I know what I was talking about the same thing. I was like, yeah, what happened to that game? <laughs> What I heard now is that it's going to come out. Like they wanted to do, they wanted to do generations first. Yeah. And then it's going to come out in, in like maybe six months from if now. It have That's Super what I heard last. If it doesn't have, oh, not Super Sonic. If it doesn't have uh, Metal Sonic, and if it doesn't have Knuckles, I'm smacking somebody at Sega. I'm sure it will. <laughs> that is sure stuff. Um, so I'm just going to keep throwing some questions at you. This one's from right. Met Leaser Productions. He says, "My question is, what are your thoughts on the rise of iPhone gaming?" Do you think it will ever overtake dedicated gaming services like 3DS or Vita? Keep up the good work. No. I think, like, because I know a couple other people that have other websites that they talk about this, like, literally all the time. It's rising. There's a lot of, there's a huge market for mobile games right now. However, I don't think it's going to overshadow, uh, what is it, portables like that. Because people, you know, they buy a phone, you know, they're buying really, they're not really buying the phone for games. They're buying the phone to act as a phone and the games are just a commodity. When you buy, when you talk about portable gaming, you're buying a portable gaming device like the 3DS or the DS or the PSP or the Vita, you know, down the line. That's just a gaming device with everything else thrown in there, thrown in there as a commodity. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, the 3DS, 3DS and the Vita should be fine as long as they offer quality product. Yeah, exactly. The if it's not a quality product, then it's in danger of not uh, succeeding. But, well, uh, yeah, they need the I, software. They need the software, and I'm, I, I, I'm going to still harp on the battery issue. Well, that's yeah. one of the problems with the big phones. Their batteries die quickly. So, okay, you get a portable gaming device. That'll last you a while. Sure, your DS will last you 20 hours. Your 3DS will last you, what, five yeah, something like that. The Vita has the same thing. You know what my problem is, though? And I noticed this when I went to Chibi Palmoto and also when I went to MizuCon. I have a feeling that not a lot of people, especially that are into the mobile gaming stuff, are going to get a Vita. Because I went all over the place there, and everybody and their mother had a 3DS or a DS. Nobody had a PSP. So I kept thinking to myself, what is that, gotta be the, what is that problem there? Why aren't people like talking about even the Vita or the PSP? And I found out... And it kind of inferred from it that a lot of people like that whole social aspect of interacting with each other between their systems. Because if you know, the 3DS has that, uh, what is it, Street Pass feature? Where you yep. can get the Miis, and you can actually use them in some of the games and stuff. And a lot of people, especially at Chibi Pop Moto this year, there was like more than like at least 100 people that did that constantly yeah. throughout the entire place. And the Vita doesn't have something like that, from what I've noticed. Like, they haven't mm. really been talking about that aspect. They've been talking about all these crazy games like Uncharted, Golden Abyss, or the port of Marvel vs. Capcom 3 for the system which is <laughs> Tekken. I mean, if I want those games, I'll go buy them on the console. I mean, right. yeah. in $60 for my Vita, which is probably more expensive than my PS3 right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, Well, I think the Vita is going to have its audience. Just, you know, we'll see how it, uh, it all plays out. But... Dissidia fans, unite. Dissidia. Yes, please. Get a console in Dissidia, for God's sakes. A game needs it. Okay, I got a comment from Troll Drill. Oh God, here we go. He says, "You know what? Boy, the troll name, you know." Sure. <laughs> nah, he's cool people. Troll Drill. He says, "Why do you think there's so many problems in the gaming community? Do you think there ever will be a time where the gaming community will push these problems away and focus on building a stronger community with the fans?" No, I mean there, there's a lot <laughs> of. Let, let me explain it because I want to clarify this before you get like massive hate right now for what I'm about to say. Basically, you put the hate on me. I don't care. Say whatever you want. <laughs> Basically, okay, a lot of the stuff and a lot of problems that comes out in the gaming uh, community and also the gaming industry as a whole is due to a lot of stupid ignorance and a lot of misinformed people. A lot of people, especially, I'll use the fighting game, you know, community as an example because you know all of us play fighting games or we've been part of the fighting game community. A lot right. of people have a lot of problems within the fighting game community because a lot of people either they tend to think that they know what they're talking about when they don't or they tend to kind of you know get that kind of like high and mighty attitude and that's a huge huge problem because like example thing when i talked about fnex before you know you can't always expect people to come join your group when you're going to kind of like you know step all over them like that. i can understand the whole hazing or to kind of you know get the tough guy look in the fighting game community and that's all good and dandy but not going to just treat people like that and shut them out like that because people are not going to be what is it appealed enough to actually want to join up your group now in the gaming community however you know the other big thing about that is that game video game people or people in the industry want games especially journalism they want it to be respected like any other form of journalism the problem is that we get such a bad rap from a lot of the people and a lot that are ignorant and do stupid things within our community that kind of ruins it for everybody else and no and everybody gets stuck up on this stupid stereotype that gamers are like you know loud obnoxious you know ignorant fat ugly wearing glasses live in their grandmother's basement type of stuff you know stupid things like that so unless you know people start smarting up or the next generation you know gets informed enough about little stupid things like that we're never going to get rid of some of the problems that we see right now so best thing to do is if you have kids teach them how to be a good gamer Otherwise, you're going to ruin it for everybody. I think it's well said. There's a lot of uh, egos goes on with this stuff. Yep. And uh, people big act time. unfortunate in a lot of circumstances. So. <laughs> yeah, big time. Um, um, I don't know. OJ, you got any questions? Well, I saw that you would have done a... What was it? The uh, Dragon Ball Z uh, fighting game, the 2D fighting game for uh, was it the DS... Uh, which which one? Supersonic Warriors 2? Yeah, Supersonic Warriors 2. So here's my question to you, sir. What's Krillin, that? yay or nay? Kr oh, well, Krillin gets crapped on a lot in the series. So, <laughs> uh, Krillin, Krillin's cool because he's kind of like the strongest human that's legitimately a human in that whole yeah. thing. So I give him props because he gets crapped on too much in the series. So we got to give him something. Thank you. Uh, um, oh, Dang, I actually checked something else out. So... You review, looks like you, you know, you review a lot of stuff. You know, you've got 
looks like I mean I saw you were talking about Thor, talking about Code Geass, talking about gaming and stuff. Well, for the record, when I was at Chibi Palmoto, there was a kick butt Code Geass cosplay that I got a picture of that was ridiculous. Like very cool. I'm actually a big fan of that uh, that guy, show. The guy and it was actually a guy and his wife that literally dressed up as Lelouch and the other dude. I forgot the other guy's name. But oh, they, they, uh, uh, I forgot his name. Oh man, I forgot his oh, name too. He was the knight that actually became a. Was it zero? Yeah, the, end yeah, of the, the night of seven. The night of seven, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, so he actually, they had the outfits down pat to a T. I mean, it was it was beautiful. It lit, and it was a husband and wife. It was crazy. But yeah, wow. sir. So, what? Which you know, you you've got you've got you've got those three different things going on. Which what's your favorite one to be doing videos about? To do be doing videos about is probably yeah. gaming. I mean, I have a lot of fun doing the anime and the movie stuff because there's not a lot of people out there, you know, within that you know YouTube community wise that actually do that, or at least you know say some of the stuff that I end up saying about movies and stuff. But gaming, you know, even though there's way too many people out there that are doing gaming right now, I have a lot of fun doing gaming because it was like the first thing for me, and I actually love playing video games. I love even if it's not contemporary games. Like you know, lately since I lost my console, I've been playing a lot of old school games like on my DS. Or my game, oh, yeah. game Boy Advance, <laughs> or my other consoles like my N64, or my Sega Genesis, even. You know, I've been playing a lot of those older school games, or even hitting up a lot of emulators, and I've, you know, using my downtime to play those and kind of get educated within my whole gaming culture stuff. So when it comes to video wise, like which one I have the most fun with, I would have to say maybe either games or anime. Okay, well, I got, I got another question for you then. Yeah. So you've been playing a lot of old school stuff, stuff on the DS. You know, things that aren't maybe as graphically or technologically rich as some of the stuff you'll find on a console. Yeah. When it comes to the emotional impact of stuff like that, when you're playing, say, an old Final Fantasy or uh, even a newer RPG, but it's uh, it's there under the limitations of like this the handheld system or the archaic system. Yeah. Do you still get that emotional impact that you can get while you're playing something like Batman or uh, Uncharted or something yes, where it's. Can. You could actually do it if you know what to look for. Like, let me give you a perfect example. Like Final Fantasy IV. Final Fantasy IV. I'm playing right now. Like Final Fantasy IV is probably one of the greatest RPGs of all time. Like right next to Chrono Trigger, right next to Final Fantasy VI. Although all the any RPG you could think of, Final Fantasy IV is awesome. Okay, because of the story that it tells. A lot of people kind of harp on the fact that it's two bit or eight bit, or was it two D and eight bit like that? And it's got it doesn't have any sort of superior type of graphics to anything right now because obviously it's not 3d so people tend to get uh was it harp on what they see and what they actually are looking at at first glance like the first you know you ever uh, heard the phrase don't judge the book by the cover you know a lot of people tend to do that way too much and stuff without actually giving it time and actually spending time right. and actually exploring. yeah i can see how i can see how it could be hard for like younger people out there to go back and play some of this stuff yeah especially but, um, this generation i mean a lot of a lot yeah. of this generation never played any of like the more classic iconic games that we played you know, back in the day, I mean, you could no. I bet you, like, if you asked a little kid right now, like, what's Vector Man, they wouldn't be able to tell you what it is. <sighs> right. You always got to look at it like kind of like music. You know, you, we were all born uh, after, but we all listened to the Beatles at some point. Exactly. And uh, there's classic games just like there's classic music, and you should go back and kind of explore that stuff. Because you're, if you're not, you're missing out on something, you know. But that's the, kind of the thing, like, you know, getting back to OJ's question, like, yes, you could still get that emotional impact if you give it the time and you actually take the time and you have the will to actually explore everything and what that game has to offer. Like, when I do a review of a game or a movie or an anime or whatever, I give it the benefit of the doubt. I go in, I don't go in trying to look for something wrong. Like, one time I got into a whole huge debate with, uh, what is it, I can't say his name, but a guy on a really popular gaming website that writes reviews and stuff he was doing a review of a movie uh, transformers 3 I, I think it was and we got into a whole debate because he said it was one of the worst movies he's ever saw in his entire life and i told him how can you say that when the cg in that movie was like top notch it was better than the last three uh, was it two movies and my point is is that he just was going in and actually not giving it the benefit of the doubt looking for something wrong and a lot of people tend to do that especially with the older games because right. because they're not 3D, because they weren't done on the Xbox 360, or that they're not on Xbox Live or PSN and stuff, a lot of people tend to look down on a lot of older games, and that's sad. Yeah, it's you know the arrogance of youth. You know, you tend to think everything that while you were around is the best. Yep. But uh, there's you know there's not there's no reason to act like that. Play the classics. Play the classics. So if you have ask, you, yeah, sorry. Have you seen the new uh, Thundercat show? Yes, I have. I just watched the was it eight episodes. Uh, I think so. So like eight or nine episodes, something like that. 
What are your thoughts on that show? I really uh, liked it. I mean, yeah. there was a couple downsides to it. There was a couple episodes where they were literally, like, you could tell they're filler, but it's a really cool reboot. Like, I, it reminds me of the He-Man Masters of the Universe reboot that they did for that franchise like that, like, as far as action, as far as presentation and stuff. I think it was cool that the beginning that they had Lionel's father, which was the original voice of Lionel from the original yes. series, that, you know, where they gave him his last hurrah, pretty much, where he did the whole thing and everything. <laughs> but as a whole... I think it's pretty cool. I think it's dope. I think it's one of the better shows out there as far as cartoons are concerned because there's a lot of crap right now. I mean, the only real good shows out there, I mean, we got Thundercats, we got Young Justice, you know, we got shows like that, which are really good. And then there's like, you know, God forbid, like SpongeBob, Dora, you know, all these. Well, it's it's a different audience for that stuff. Well, maybe that's a bad example, but like, you know, like another show like Ben 10. I'm not a fan of Ben 10 because I really never cared for like Ben 10 at all. But As far as Thundercats concerned, I think it's a dope show. I think it's amazing. I can't wait for season two. Yeah, I really, I was really surprised. I, uh, I watched like the one episode and I just got sucked into it, and um, it's pretty awesome. They did, a, they're doing a great job with it. So that's one of the better shows on Cartoon Network right now. Yeah. What are shows you watching, OJ? Me? Yeah. I haven't been watch. watching anything lately. I mean, I've been watching. I've been going back, and while I work on stuff, I watch anime I've already seen. So. What's the latest uh, anime you've been watching? Um, the latest, well, series. the latest one I, all right, the latest series, well, the one that I haven't seen before that I saw was High School of the Dead, oh, which yeah. was an interesting series, but it was, there was too much fan service for me to really get into it. Mm. It was too much about the half-naked women wa- running around beating up zombies. That's a lot of anime. Have you ever seen a Oni Chibara? Or that oh, yeah. Of- <laughs> it's like, oh, like that. Yeah. Did you play the game? Yeah, I played oh, the game dear. once and never again. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever question OJ? Have you ever seen Great Teacher Onizuka? I've seen the first like eight episodes and it was hilarious. I just never got time to go back to it because it's an I, investment, man. It. Dude, watch that series. That is one of the best anime series of all time. Literally. All right, I'll I'll go back and get to it. I mean, it's just daunting. There's like what forty something episodes, fifty. Uh, it's big. Last time I checked, it's about forty episodes. I mean, they got yeah, they got two box sets. I know I got both of them now, so there's like ten volumes. Something like that. All right. But literally, it's that. It's like Cowboy Bebop good. That's how good it is. It's like it's real. Cowboy Bebop good. Okay, that is the best okay. endorsement I think you could have given it. As real, I mean, it's the same voice actor, Steve Blum. He does the same voice. Like that dude's like in everything. Like he's the same <laughs> voice actor as Spike that he is for Ikichi Onizuka. It's oh it's nice. Not, and the funny part is, when I went to Chiripa, I found out that that Richard Epcar dude, he actually voices the teacher in Great Teacher Onizuka, and I did not know that. My family oh. found out about that. <laughs> nice. But you met right. a true hero. Like, I also lately I've been watching D. Gray Man. Yeah, I saw the first few episodes of that. It didn't quite hook me yet. Does it catch you after like episode four or something? It's long. It's really long. It's not like Naruto long, but I mean, as you get deeper into it, it gets a little more interesting. Oh, okay. I'll give that a shot. I also saw Soul Eater. Soul Eater is pretty good. Yeah, I, apparently the manga differs greatly and the, the show, yeah. you know, cuts itself off, but it was pretty good. Yeah, all manga, literally, they almost always differ from the anime. Like like the GTO thing, the actual manga goes on longer and has a completely different ending than the anime. Oh, good to know. That's interesting. Do you, uh, do you prefer the manga versions or the, uh, the actual? If you want like, the original story because the manga always comes first, go read the manga. There's very few instances where the anime is first. I know Cowboy Bebop, I think the anime was first. And Evangelion. And then and Evangelion, yeah, exactly. And then the, the manga came afterwards, but... For most anime out there, if except for those two, if you want the original story, go to the manga. Because usually they're, the characters are handled better, like Naruto. Naruto is much more of a badass in the manga than he is in the anime. Because the anime, that that little noise, believe it, gets so annoying. <laughs> yeah. In the in the manga, this dude, this little kid actually curses, he flips people off, it's, he does all kinds of crazy stuff. He's yeah, kind of a jerk. <laughs> But the manga. I read. Uh, I read One Piece. Like a lot of the manga, but I never saw the show. One Piece is actually the manga is so much better than the show. So okay, so should, you bo- should I bother watching the show? Or if you, if you want to actually see it in motion, because there are, I think there are a couple different stories in the anime than there is in the manga. I could be wrong because I've I've gone far, but I haven't completed the manga yet. It's huge. But it's huge. Yeah, it's like nine hundred books or something. Oh, it's ridiculous, bro. I mean, the longest one that I've seen so far has got to be Naruto, because I think Naruto is still going on right now. Yeah, it is. Like it was funny. I when I when I when I um left Japan the first time, like five or six years ago, I can't remember how long ago, maybe five years ago, um, they had just gotten to the point where the manga was the where the manga had a you know, there's a big story fight 
And then basically when the, when the manga started up again, it was going to be Shippuden. Yeah. It was basically going to be Shippuden. It was right then, and then now it's just still... It's still going. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know what it's, it kind of reminds me of? It, it's, it has like what I call the Dragon Ball Z effect, is that the characters, they start off so small, and they just continuously go up. Like Naruto is like the Goku of that universe now, because he can fire for his guns from his fingertips practically, for the most part. Yeah. And at least they actually had them age, too, which I appreciate. Yeah. That was another thing that was good about DBZ, that the characters actually got older. I mean, it gives them more... They seem more real when you see that time has passed. Like, Naruto, between Naruto and Shippuden, he actually grows up, and it's somewhat impressive. Yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting topic we can get into. Uh, do you like... It seems like a lot of the, uh, the anime, Japanese animation, the characters actually age. Yeah. Where in the American shows, American comics, they're kind of stuck in one place. Stuck in time. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're just stuck there forever. So uh, what, what do you prefer? Do you think they, they should age and, and should be some progression or what? I think it depends on how it's handled. Like, if you look like, like for example, like, you ever seen the original uh, Street Fighter anime? Street Fighter 2V. Uh, yes. Street Fighter 2V yes. was handled so well. Like, because, I mean, it was based on a video game, but they treated it like a completely different thing for the anime. Literally, and they paid so much homage to it. If you look at that, compared to the Street Fighter cartoon that was here in the States, it was completely messed <laughs> up. Like, literally, like, somebody just took the script and threw it out the window type of stuff, type of thing. But I think as far as, like, characters aging and getting older and kind of, you know, having repercussions from the events that go on with them and stuff, I think it, it, like I said, it all depends on how it's handled. If it's done well, like, where it contributes to the character, contributes to their story and kind of, you know, keeps the going the whole, uh, what is it, the whole main point of the entire storyline like that. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's good. If it doesn't, or if it's better to keep them stuck in time to do, uh, was it stuck in time to do that to kind of pay homage to the character or keep like, for example, 007, James Bond. That character, that character. If you think about it, even if you don't never read the books or just watch the movies or whatnot, James Bond technically never gets older. There's no yes. connecting James Bond stories like that. Right. And the same thing also goes for Batman. Batman's the same thing. Batman technically never ages. I know they've done stuff where he gets older, like in the comics and stuff like that. But if you right, think, right. Look at, like, Batman the Animated Series. Batman never ages a day. Well, that's part of the problem with American comics is that they never progress. It's like um, we find our niche, our niche, and we actually never move away from it. We never explore ever any anything else that's, like, different and stuff. I they feel don't. like they, they kind of, like, take a little more risk on the much more crazy and the weird. Well, we yeah, do. but what happens is with American comics is it gets to a point where the continuity is so messed up. Yeah. The characters never age or anything. Then they go, oh, we have to reboot everything. We have to start over. Yeah, you we're notice so that? messed up. It never does that. Anime and manga, they never reboot their characters. They, they never right. reboot their series. I mean, they've done it twice, maybe, with, like, Dragon Ball Z and, like, maybe Full Metal Alchemist. But, like, you never really see that in anime and manga. But, like, in American comics, like you said, they're always constantly re-updating and rebooting their characters. Right, it's just, uh, it's, it's just poor storytelling. Like, if you tell a story, you should you should already know what the ending's going to be, and, and the ending should come at some point. Yeah. It should be, like, a story like arc. Yeah. They, uh, that's what animes, animes, like you can tell, they, they build towards things. It has peaks and valleys, and then it goes somewhere, and finally, eventually it ends. But the, uh, the American stuff's just like, let's just keep it how it is, milk all the money out of it. And then when it gets too screwed up and it makes no sense, then we'll just reboot. Yeah, it's kind of a frustrating thing. thing. We'll go back to square one. Right. So, yeah. what do you think about the uh, Dragon Ball Z? Uh, I know they're going to be doing HD oh, versions. Oh, Dragon Ball Z Kai is talking about. When we were at New York Comic Con, they were they were debuting. Uh, it's, it's just going to come out on like Blu-ray, like HD now. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. I know okay. they have Dragon Ball Z Kai, which is a remake pretty much of like the Saiyan saga and the Frieza saga for the most part. But then they also have the collections, which are pretty much the original series, but it's in HD. They have the remix soundtracks and things like that. I think I think I've heard of like a little couple things about it, but you can only release those DVDs so many times before people are like, OK, what the heck? Like, why do I we'll have a DVD in 3D eventually? Uh, that would be awesome if you think about it that would actually be kind of cool I'm just curious how they're going to actually rotoscope that in 3D like I don't know how well, that would work if it ever actually happens but that would be, be interesting yeah <laughs> that would be weird alright so I think we're going to wrap it up here um, what are your you have any final words here sir uh, pretty much uh, keep doing what you guys are doing I listen to the show all the time when you post so keep keep it up keep up the good work you know just let me know if you ever need me back and stay epic all right, thank you. Thank We're you. certainly invited. Anytime you got uh, something going on, let us know. Yeah. Um, so you can find Venomous Fat Man at youtube.com slash Venomous Fat Man. You can also find him at realtacogamer.com. 
and uh, he's got a big event, which will be this will go up on Friday morning, so I guess it'll be later that night. That night. And, yeah. and what's the website on that again? It's uh, flipperscinema.com, but like I said, if you Google Flippers 360, it's the first link that comes up. All right, and you'll be there, and you can say hi to Venomous Fat Man and uh, yeah. all that. So check it's, it out, play some Call of Duty. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. There are actually people flying in from other states to actually come to this event. I was surprised. Somebody told me that today, and I was like, wow. Dang. Sounds huge. Yeah. OJ, any last words here? What's going on with you? Well, no, I got to say, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. I'm glad to have another anime fan on the show. <laughs> That was nice. <laughs> wow. Like, what are these me. guys talking about? Like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> They're talking about anime. <laughs> Stop What's talking about your cartoons. About, yeah. Hush. <laughs> told me, there's no Pokemon talk. So was, oh, I guess, no, yeah. Check this out. If, if you want to talk about Pokemon stuff, I met a girl named Pika Bellich. She has the world record for the most Pokemon memorabilia ever. Hands down. She's got, dude, she's got a Volkswagen. That literally has Pikachu's ears and a Pikachu tail on the back of it. Wow. She's literally that like is the incredible. Batman in the Otaku worlds. So like that, that, that's how she is. She's she's crazy. She's pretty cool to hang out with, though. That's cool. You know, whatever, whatever makes you happy in this world, you know, it's uh, it's all good. <laughs> so. All right, so I think it's gonna do it for us. Uh, for OJ, you. For Venomous Fat Man, you. You're also on Twitter, by the way, right? Yes, uh, at Venomous Fat Man One, the number one. Uh, at Venomous Fat Man One on Twitter. You add him on there. So for OJ, for Venomous Fat Man, this is John signing off. Thank you for listening to John Rambo Presents, the best and free and optional entertainment. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.